is Dr. K. C. H. Aparo, working as an associate professor in mechanical engineering. So, good morning, my dear students. So, in previous class, we discussed the uh, sources of energy. Um, today, um, in the previous class, sources of energy, in, in sources of energy, mainly we discussed the fuels. In fuels, also we discussed the solid type and liquid type. Uh, in this class, I want to, I would like to discuss about uh, uh, gases fuels. After completion of that one, the remaining sources of fuels uh, will be explained. Okay, in last class, you know that these are the sources of energies. In last class, we discussed the solid type of sources. It means fuels, solid type, liquid type fuels also we discussed it. just to, uh, we know that the solid type of fuels means uh, coke, so formation of coke, advantage of the coke, okay. So just like coal, coke, anthracite, bituminous, so, so, so many uh, types of uh, coals or uh, solid fuels we discussed in previous class. Liquid fuels also we discussed what is the advantage of the petroleum and petroleum products uh, or petroleum derivatives just like uh, <coughs> petrol and uh, diesel and uh, uh, different uh, petroleum products were already discussed in previous class also. So in this class we will see the gases fields. What is the importance of the gases fields? So what is the advantage of the gases fields? Just like uh, natural gas, blast furnace uh, gas. So what is the advantage of these gases also we will discuss in this class. So after that we will discuss the energy stored in water. <coughs> you know that uh, water power plants. So advantage of the water power, power plants. We will see briefly about this one. And the nuclear energy by nuclear power plants we will see. And the wind energy. So wind power plants and the solar energies also. So what is the basic theme? What is the basic uh, description about the solar energy, we will discuss this one. And next to tidal energy, so next to geothermal energy and to thermoelectrical power. So these things will be discussed in this class. Uh, first of all, we will see the uh, gases type of fuels. So we know that fuel, um, fuels are three types, <coughs> okay. Solid fuels already discussed and liquid fuels also already discussed. So, we will see gases fuels, okay. So, these are the uh, gases fuels. So, first one is the natural gas, natural gas. The main consistence of this natural gas is the methane, CH4, you know this one, and ethane, C2H6. These two are the main consistence in the natural Okay. So, the caloric uh, value is very high for this uh, natural gas. The value of that one is equal to 21,000 kilojoule per meter cube. You know this one. The main advantage of this uh, natural gas is to uh, use it alternately or uh, simultaneously with oil for ice engines, internal combustion. Engines. So, we will use uh, as a fuel in ice engines, internal combustion engines. So, just like alternate of oil or simultaneously with oil. Okay, this is the main advantage of the natural gas. Right? So, next one is the coal gas. So, the main consistence of this coal gas is the hydrogen. We will see byproducts of coal gas is the hydrogen and carbon monoxide and carbo hydrocarbons. So, these things. Uh, it is prepared by carbonization of the coal, carbonization of the coal. You know that uh, the, what is carbonization, just uh, burning of any coal with lacking of sufficient uh, air, you know this one. So, uh, the main advantage of this uh, coal gas also, uh, it is uh, used in boilers, 
and sometimes also use it in use it for the commercial purpose also mainly used in the boilers for the energy <coughs> for boiling so it is used as a just like fuel gases fuel uh, for the running of the boilers okay then that is the main advantage of the coal gas so next one is the coke oven gas we will see what is coke oven gas so mainly it is obtained during the just like uh, production of coke by heating bituminous coal so by heating by heating bituminous coal you will get the coke in this process in this uh, production of coke we will get this type of uh, coke oven gas okay the volatile content of this uh, coal is driven up by heating major portion of this gas is utilized in heating of the oven so the main purpose of this uh, gas is to uh, it is utilized in heating of the heating the ovens okay so this gas must be thoroughly filtered before using this uh, in gas intense okay so the main purpose of the coke oven gas is it is used in the gas engine um, for the production of uh, for the conversion of fuel engine to mechanical energies just like so these are the some type of fuels we'll see few more uh, gases fuels so next one is the blast furnace gas blast furnace gas okay so according to name so it is obtained from the uh, smelting operation you know the operation of smelt smelting means so just like the separation of any uh, just like any metal from this uh, from its core core material just like uh, suppose separation of aluminum from bauxite 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 is the ore of the aluminum so separation of that metal from this ore similarly uh, iron from this ore okay so just like uh, pig iron so in pig iron manufacturing so this gas is produced as a by product so it contains so 20% of the carbon monoxide after filtering it it may be blended with the uh, richer gas and be used in the so gas in this directly so the smelting operation will get this type of blast furnace gas mainly it is used to run the gas engines directly okay so that is the main advantage of the blast furnace gas so next one is the producer uh, gas we'll see what is producer gas so it results from the uh, partial oxidation of the coal coke or peat you know that what is coal coke and peat because these things already discussed in previous class so when they are born with an insufficient quantity of a just like smelting insufficient quantity of a it is produced so it is produced specifically designed retorts so for the particular by using the particular retorts so we can produce they can produce this uh, producer type of gas so it has low heating value low heating value so this type of this is the one another type of the uh, gas fuel producer gas fuel so next one is a just like here we'll see uh, water or illuminating gas this one also very important so it is produced by blowing steam just blowing up the steam into white hot coke or coal so blowing the blowing the steam into the coke or coal so we get this type of uh, water illuminating gases so it means it occurs by the decomposition just like decomposition of steam uh, the decomposition of steam takes place to liberating the free hydrogen and oxygen in the steam so combines with the carbon to form the carbon monoxide you know that carbon plus uh, 
on steam. So H2 so it forms the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen. So it has uh, this gas uh, com composition varies as the hydrogen content if the coal is used based upon the hydrogen content the composition of this gas will be varied. So this is uh, another type of the so fuel gas for this uh, running of steam engines or any gas engines like this. So next one is the uh, sever gas. Sever gas. So it occurs by the decomposition. So or it obtained from the sewage disposal uh, vats in which uh, uh, fermentation and uh, decay occurs due to this fermentation decay. So this type of gas will be produced. Okay. So it consists of mainly moss gas, just like CH4 and uh, is collected at large disposal uh, disposal plants, just like disposal of any uh, animals uh, wastages uh, or disposal of plants, just like by using those uh, disposals or the decomposition of this disposal plants, we will get the, this type of uh, serious gas. Okay. So it works as a fuel for gas engines, mainly running of gas engines. We can use this type of fuel as a this type of gas as a fuel. So, which is uh, in turn drive the plant forms and agitators uh, also. Okay. Plant form so uh, and agitators for running up for driving up these uh, plant plums and agitators. Just you can use the serious gas also. The main advantage of the uh, severe gas it is the better control of combustion. Okay. Advantage of the main advantage of the all gases fuels. So gases fuel advantage fuel, overall advantage of the gases fuel. See, so better control of combustion. We can control the combustion process by uh, these gases. So much less uh, excess air is needed for the complete combustion. So. Next to economy in fuel and the more efficiency of the furnace operation. Economy in fuel and the more efficiency in fuel furnace operation. So, but the furnace operation, so it is very efficient. So, easy maintenance of oxidation or reducing atmosphere also. Okay. Next to cleanliness, we will get the we can maintain cleanliness for this uh, gas fuels for the use of these gas fuels. So no problem of storage. There is no problems of the storage if the supply is available from the public supply line. Okay. So these are the main advantages of the uh, gas fuels. So next to important properties of the gas fuels the main properties of the gas of fuel see. so it has uh, all the gases fuels have good caloric values okay. so flammability or good uh, caloric values so those have also just a good viscosity viscous uh, fuels and the specific gravity also uh, have good quantity uh, next to density also very high. Next to diffusibility also very high. Okay. These are the main uh, properties of this uh, gas fuel. So, you will see uh, just like uh, just uh, uh, different gas fuels, important gas fuels, natural gas and coal gas and blast furnace gas. So, the composition percentage of these uh, uh, gases also here given. So, natural gas in this natural gas carbon monoxide is the one percentage. So, methane uh, it is 93 percentage. The methane uh, that is the 3. Okay. Nitrogen is the 3. So, similarly coal gas you will see the hydrogen percentage is very high and uh, carbon monoxide is the 9.0 percentage and the CH4 25 percent and uh, uh, C4 H3 
that is a 3 percent and nitrogen is a 6. Okay. In blast furnace, the carbon monoxide will is 8 percent and the carbon dioxide is 11 percent. These are the uh, main compositions or main uh, compositions of the gases we can observe here. Okay. So, the, uh, so, these are the just a few details about the gases fuels. Up to now, just like we covered the uh, fuels, uh, solid fuels and the gases fuels and uh, liquid fuels also. So, what is the different advantages uh, and properties of this uh, fuels also we covered. So, next we will see the remaining sources of uh, other than fuels, sources of energy. So, next one is uh, just like uh, so, before going to uh, that one, we will see the caloric values, how to find out the uh, caloric values. So, what is the formula of the, uh, to find caloric values, we will see. Uh, caloric values, <coughs> the, the energy liberated uh, by the complete oxidation of unit mass or volume of the fuel. So, that is the caloric value, it is expressed by, uh, in kilojoule per kg Kelvin for the solids, uh, in liquids kilojoule per meter cube per gas, so you know this one. So, fuels which contains hydrogen have two caloric values. So, hydrogen uh, byproduct of fuels uh, have two types of the caloric values, one is the lower caloric value, another one is the higher caloric values. So, these are the formulas to find the lower caloric values and the higher caloric, caloric values. Okay. Uh, the lower caloric value, the lower caloric value is the heat liberated per kg of fuel after uh, detecting the heat necessary to vaporize the steam, okay, formed by hydrogen. Higher caloric value, what is higher caloric value? Higher caloric value of the fuel is the one indicated by constant volume calor calorimeter in which steam is condensed and the heat of vapor is recovered, steam is condensed and the heat of vapor is recovered. So, okay. uh, this is the formula for the finding the lower caloric value, lower caloric value is equal to higher caloric value minus 2465 uh, mw, mw is the mass of the water vapor produced by combustion of, combustion of 1 kg of fuel. And uh, next to uh, 2465 is the just like uh, kilojoule per kg is the latent heat of the corresponding standard temperature, okay. corresponding to that standard temperature, is saturated temperature that is on 50 degree Celsius. So, 2465 is the latent heat and uh, MW is the mass of uh, water vapor. Okay. So, by using this formula, so you can find out the lower character calorific values. So, this is the formula in MKS units. So, according to MKS units, lower calorific value, lower calorific value is equal to higher calorific value minus. So, 588.76 mw. So, here also mass of water vapor produced by combustion of 1 kg of fuel and 588.76 is the latent heat. So, in kilo, kilo calories. So, next one is the just like uh, gross caloric value. How to find out the gross caloric values? Gross caloric value means so higher caloric value. How to find out the higher caloric value? So, according to Dulong's formula. So, here formula has been given to find out the higher caloric value. So, higher caloric value is equal, value is equal to 1 by 100 into 33,800 plus 14,000 into H minus O by 8 hydrogen oxygen by 8 plus 9,270. Yes. So, this is the uh, this formula for finding the higher caloric values. This one also formula.
formula for finding the higher calibrated values in MK system. Just you can remember this one. So, these are the details regarding the gases or uh, fuels. Now, we will see remaining sources of energy. Next one is the energy stored in water. You know that uh, by water power plants, we can produce the energy stored in the water. So, this energy uh, it contained in the flowing streams of water. You know that in the flowing streams of water, there is a mechanical energy that uh, either in uh, kinetic or potential energy. So, kinetic energy in the moving streams and our potential energy of the so some elevation with respect to the lower datum level. You know this according to height that potential uh, energy according to velocity moving uh, stream that is the kinetic energy. So, uh, this type of energy will be produced by the uh, establishment of the power plants it means water power plants. So, water power is quite cheap where water is available in abundance. abundance. Okay. So, based upon the source of uh, waters, uh, this type of plants will be established. So, uh, establishment of plant that takes uh, high cost, it means capital cost of hydroelectrical power plant is very high as compared to the other types of power plants. Right? Uh, their operating costs are very quite low. Once establishment, uh, establishment of the power plant, water power plant is very high. So, but maintenance and operating costs are very less compared to uh, other power plants. So, this is the uh, one type of uh, energy. Uh, energy it means uh, water energy, energy stored in the water or energy uh, from the water. So, next one is the nuclear energy. You know that this is very important to uh, energy. So, because nuclear, uh, one of the outstanding fact, facts about the nuclear power plant or nuclear power is the large amount of energy that can be released from the small mass of active material. Just like you know that uranium is the materials. By using uranium's uh, nuclear materials, you can produce this one. It means uh, complete fission of 1 kg of uranium, 1 kg of uranium contains energy, that energy equal to uh, equivalent of 4,500 tons of coal. So, 1 kg uranium gives the energy, that energy equal to uh, energy delivered from the just like 4500 tons of coal okay, or 2000 tons of the oil. So, nuclear power plant is very important power plant. So, you can uh, get good power from the less amount of uh, nuclear materials, just uh, active materials, uranium. Okay. So, next to wind power plants. So, this one also very important. But uh, uh, the output uh, maintenance of output is uh, not continuously because uh, uh, the flowing of wind, uh, it, it depends upon the flowing of uh, wind. Uh, you know that the man has been served by the power from winds uh, for many centuries. So, because uh, you know the power of uh, wind, uh, every man experienced that one. But the total amount of energy generated in this manner is very small. Okay. Uh, the expense of installation and the variability of operations have tended to limit the use of uh, windmill. Okay. So, installation of this windmill is very, very high, uh, expensive, and the variability in output. So, output. Uh, uh, power generation is mainly depend upon the flow of wind. So, there is no uh, consistency uh, because uh, uh, 
uh, you know that the variable output has no serious disadvantage so because of this one the the service of this power plants mainly used for the pumping of water in the storage tanks or the charging of the uh, storage batteries this uh, for this uh, purpose we we can use this type of power okay so because uh, we cannot get the continuous uh, power generation here because the power is uh, depend upon the flow wind you know okay. so next one is the solar energy uh, this one also very good uh, a lot of work to, to utilize the solar energy for generation of steam so it has been done in some countries particularly in russia so a serious fault of this uh, source of energy is of course uh, that is effective only during the day you know that uh, during the day uh, there is a good radiation from the sun uh, so that if you if you want to continuous output is needed you just you have to some large uh, reservoir of energy such as storage battery or heat accumulator tanks it must be drawn up on the uh, at night time for the continuous processing of the energy okay. so because night time uh, we cannot produce we cannot get any solar radiation and uh, for the continuity of energy just to how to uh, set the storage batteries and uh, steam or heat accumulator tanks so this is also the output is uh, handicapped if there is a cloudy weather okay so based upon the climate atmospheric condition that uh, the output of uh, solar energy is depend upon the uh, just like atmospheric conditions uh, because you know that it is handicapped if there is a cloud uh, weather uh, in the cloud weather you can't get any radiations from the solar so nevertheless Uh, there are some locations where strong solar radiation is received very regularly just like uh, some and uh, desert areas you know the rajasthan something where the sources of mineral fuel and some condition where the sources of mineral fuels are either scanty or the uh, entirely lacking so we offer so we can offer this type of uh, solar plantations in the uh, areas okay so uh, solar energy production is depend upon the climatic conditions and the, so uh, we can have to install this type of uh, power plants solar energy power plants in everywhere so based upon the uh, just like uh, atmospheric condition so they can establish the proper solar energy plant power plants to produce the solar energy okay so that is the another type of uh, energy source for the drawing of energy okay next one is the tidal power plants you know that the, so tidal uh, power so we you know that uh, the rise and fall of the tides offers a means of storing water at rise and discharge of the sea at fall so you know that uh, Uh, this is the high tide so uh, you, you will see in um, sea source <coughs> so this is the just like dam so when the high tide is comes into uh, dam automatically the doors will be open the uh, water will be collected and the tidal basin here tidal basins so after the uh, just like uh, high tide in the time of high tide the doors will be open and the water will be collected at the tidal basin the doors will be closed after that so then this uh, collected water will be discharged through the uh, turbine generator turbine through turbines when this water uh, just discharge from this uh, tidal basin to sea by turbine automatically turbine will rotate so automatically uh, 
due to this rotation of the turbine generated energy will be uh, collected or energy will be generated so this is the process at the time of high tide the gates are opened after the storing of water in the tidal elevation the gates are closed you know that at the time of high tide the doors in the dam will be opened after the uh, just like storing water in the tidal elevation just like this one tidal basin the doors will be closed so after the tide has received okay there is a working hydraulic head between the basin and the open sea so this is the hydraulic head and the water is allowed to flow back to sea through water turbines this through this turbine so automatically the water flows through this turbine automatic turbine will be rotated so uh, because of the rotation the energy will be created so this is the one type of formation of energy by uh, tides so in some areas uh, so this type of power plants also will be established uh, establishing this type of uh, power plants for the production of the energy so so these are the just like uh, another sources of energy so finally you saw uh, source of uh, sources of energies uh, mainly uh, sources of energy is the main is the fuels fuels mm -hmm. also three types we already discussed solid and liquid and fuel we already discussed and uh, water power plants and uh, for the energy from the water energy from the sun so uh, sun it means and uh, energy from the wind energy from the tides tidal energy so all are these are just like uh, sources of the energies okay so uh, in next class we will see the what are the different cycles uh, are used for the generation of uh, energy in the plants in power plants okay in what type of uh, just a cycle used in the steam engine and uh, thermal engine we'll see those things thank you for this uh, listening class we'll see next time thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates